fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Full back Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Several of the most important cattle trails in Texas led to the railroad shipping point known as Trail City. It was a turbulent town that attracted outlaws and gamblers as well as cowmen. Tonto, the friend of the Lone Ranger, bought supplies in Trail City. And when he rejoined his masked friend in the camp outside of town, the Indian told about a man who frequented the Red Dog Cafe. Him gunman, Kimasabi. Everyone call him Sarsaparilla Kid. Does him drink only sarsaparilla. Why did you call him a gunman, Toto? For well, him wear two guns. People say him sit alone in cafe for past few days, waiting for man him want to kill. Does he look like a killer? No. Oh, him young, good looking. He must have him doctor. How do you know he's a doctor? Well, me see where him tie horse at hitch rail. Me tie scout alongside. Then take quick look and saddlebag. <laughs> you certainly were curious. Uh, how did you find the saddlebag? Uh, now, you curious. Yes, <laughs> I admit it. Uh, well, me find bag of doctor's tools and medicine and paper that say him finished medical school in East. Did you see the man's name on it? Ah, uh, it say James Hubbard. I wonder, Tonto, why a man who took the doctor's oath to save human life is prepared to turn killer. Me wonder, same thing. Tonto, you said Dr. Hubbard spent the last few days in the cafe. Well, that's what me hear. You know if he's there evening. Huh? Him there all time, from morning till cafe closed. All right, Tonto. We'll go there tonight. That evening, soon after dark, the Lone Ranger and Tonto started for town. Meanwhile, the Red Dog Cafe was crowded with cowboys, whose herds had been brought to Trail City for shipment by railroad. Young Dr. Hubbard sat alone at a table in the rear, a bottle of sarsaparilla, the only soft drink of that time, in front of him. His eyes were fixed on the batwing doors at the street entrance, until an old man sweeping the floor came close to the table and said, Mister, I heard you've been asking about a man named John Stork. Yes, I have. Why? <clears throat> For five dollars, I'll tell you where he is. All right. Here's your money. Where is he? He's camped about a half a mile east of town. He got there this afternoon and set up his tent. His tent? Yep. He's a preacher. Well, then he's the wrong man. The John Thorpe I'm waiting for is one of the toughest cattle barons in Texas. He makes his own laws and lives by the rope and gun. 
should be here with a cattle herd in a few days. How long is it since you've heard about him? About ten years. Uh, he's the same man. Thorpe used to be what you said, but for ten years now he's been traveling around holding revival meetings near cow towns like this. His daughter travels with him. Her name is Jane. He set up a big tent and aims to start his revival meetings tomorrow night. He calls himself Brother John now. And he preaches some powerful sermons against lynching and gunfighting. Brother John. I don't suppose he carries a gun anymore. No. He don't need a gun to defend himself. Nobody would shoot a sky pilot. Hmm. I said nobody would shoot a sky pilot. I heard you. Not even a hot-headed gun slick like Lightning Joe Crane. But who's he? He's foreman of the Box O outfit, which just bedded down a herd of cattle outside of town. <laughs> last year. What happened last but year? Lightning Joe was in town during the cattle loading season, and, and Brother John was here at the same time. Lightning Joe started raising the ruckus, and Brother John disarmed him and threw him out of the tent. <laughs> oh, never, never in all my life did I see a man as howling mad as Lightning Joe. <laughs> and that preacher sure has nerve. Wonder. As I told you, mister, no one would shoot a sky pilot like Brother John. You'd better get on with your sweeping. I want to think. Yeah, yeah, better get on with my sweeping. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Toto drew rein and dismounted in the darkness behind the cafe. <laughs> Near the closed back door, they found a window through which they could see the entire length of the big room. Tonto indicated young Dr. Hubbard, seated at his usual table near the window. I'd like to talk to him, Tonto. I don't care to enter the cafe wearing a mask. Uh, me go get him? Yes, ask him to come here with you. Uh -huh. You'd uh, better use the front door. While Tonto walked along the side of the building toward the front door, Lightning Joe Crane and his pal Brazos entered the cafe, followed by the Boxo Cowboys. Lightning Joe and Brazos strode to the rear of the room where the Sarsaparilla kid sat alone. They saw the chance to haze a tenderfoot, and Lightning Joe said, Well, an Easterner, with two guns and a bottle of sarsaparilla. <laughs> Look here, you pilgrim, you know who I am. No. I'm Lightning Joe Crane, and I've plugged half a dozen men in my time. I'll take your word for it. Well, now, no one who drinks sarsaparilla has any business packing two guns. You better hand them over to me before you shoot yourself. I'll stand so my guns are level with yours. You want them? Try to take them. Oh, big talk for a four-flusher. I don't like to be called names. Hey, Why? Lightning Joe staggered back from the unexpected blow to his chin. He reached for a gun and shouted, I'll kill you for that! The doctor, firing from the hip, smashed Lightning Joe's half-drawn weapon. Then with his other gun, covered Brazos. Please, mister. No, don't shoot. Reach for a gun, you'll get the same as your pal. My hands are up. Come on, boys, he's asking for trouble. Oh. The box old men hesitated when Dr. Hubbard waved his threatening gun. You men, stay back. Get him, boys. I'll shoot the first man who takes a step or draws a gun. Then someone threw a bottle. Right Hubbard dodged. His guns wavered. In that split second, Lightning Joe leaped at him. I've got him. All right, I'm holding his arm so he can't shoot. Struggling to break away from Lightning Joe's bear-like grip, Dr. Hubbard dropped his guns. Lightning shouted, Hit him, Brazos! Use your gun as a club! Right, I'll crack his skull. As Brazos lifted his weapon overhead, a gun barked. Hey. Brazos' gun flew out of his hand from the impact of a bullet fired by a masked man who had suddenly entered the back door. Holding two guns, he said, Stand back, you men, all of you. He's mad! He smashed my gun! I said, all of you, stand back! Toto, who had hurried from the front door, jabbed his gun into Lightning Joe's side. No! Get back! All right, all right! Doctor! You pick up guns. I've got them. We got your horse behind buildings. You go out back door. But who are you? you come. We're friends, Hubbard. Trying to get you out of here alive. I'll get the three of you for this. Don't anyone move. I don't understand who you are. There's no time for questions. Go with Toto. Your horse right here. There'll be a bullet for anyone who tries to follow us. All right, get going. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. <laughs> By the time Lightning Joe and Brazos opened the door, the Lone Ranger and his companions were out of sight beyond buildings. The three soon reached the masked man's camp in the woods south of town. There, the Lone Ranger gave an adequate explanation for his mask and told how Tonto had learned the doctor's identity. There's one question you haven't answered. Yes? What is it, Doctor? Why did you and Tonto help me? You needed help. You might have been killed. 
Life is cheap in this part of the country. Yes, life may be cheap, but your medical training is priceless. The West needs you. The country would suffer great loss if you were to die or kill. If I were to kill? Could you practice your profession after violating the doctor's oath by taking a human life? What makes you think I'd kill someone? The way you wear and handle your guns. Oh. Why not tell Tom and me the story? Well, I guess I owe you that much. It began ten years ago. I was 15 years old, living with my father, who was a poor homesteader. Was your mother alive? No, she'd been dead for about a year. Dad and I lived near a wealthy rancher who hated homesteaders. Some of his cattle were stolen, and on the basis of flimsy evidence, the rancher accused my father of being the thief. Because of his charges, Dad was lynched. I'm sorry. Later, the real thieves were caught. They confessed, and Dad was proved innocent. But that didn't bring him back. I swore then that I'd kill the rancher. Oh? Before I could carry out my vow, the sheriff with whom I lived after Dad's death sent me to a rich lawyer in the East. A friend of Dad's who adopted me and sent me through school. Yes? After finishing medical school, I came back to Texas to get him. I found he'd sold his ranch. I didn't know where to find him, so I came here to Trail City. Figuring he'd be here with cattle for shipment by railroad. Ten years is a long time, Doctor. The rancher may be dead. No, no, he's alive. His name is John Thorpe. What? You don't mean Brother John? Yes. I learned tonight that Thorpe had become a preacher. That he's near Trail City. I've heard that Brother John does lots of good preaching against violence. Do you still want to kill him? I don't know. I'm going to talk to him. I think you should. Tom and I'll go with you. You don't need to. We'll go with you, Doctor. Please give me your gun. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one that have that happy people have to say. Eating our weedies and the do-do-do and okay. Okay. And that's the truth. Take California champions, for instance. Now, way out west, you'll hear us talking about a quarterback we call Van Brocklin, a passing star with weedy style who throws that ball a country mile. And Duke Snyder, too, is a West Coast man, a fancy slugger, and a Wheaties fan who takes his bat and scares them all when he knocks the hide right off the ball. Now, these two champions know that there's big energy in their favorite cereal because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and doo, okay. Okay. to continue. Meanwhile, most of the Boxo cow hens had left the Red Dog and returned to their camp. A few townsmen remained in the cafe, also lightning Joe Crane and his friend Brazos. The two sat at a table examining guns they'd borrowed from a couple of the ranch hands. It makes me sore when I think of my favorite gun being smashed. Hey, we both have to buy new ones, Joe. Masked man's bullet smashed mine. I'd like to put a bullet through his head. That goes double for that sarsaparilla drinking Easterner. I wish I knew where to find him. Maybe the barkeeper knows where he's staying. Yeah. Or maybe the old sweeper over there knows. I'll ask him. Hey, Whiskers. Yeah? Uh, speaking to me? Yeah, come here a minute. Yes, sir? You're always around. You probably hear a lot of talk. You know where we'll find the sarsaparilla kid? Uh, you might find him with Brother John. He aims to gun him. Here's five dollars. That's so you forget you talk to him. Thanks. You keep your mouth shut. Yes, sir. I sure will. The Sparilla kid's not the only one who'd like to shoot Brother John. Yeah, you've got a score to settle with him, Joe. For the way he threw you out of his revival tent last year. And I haven't forgotten that. I'd like to... Brazos, I know how to square things with both the preacher and the kid. How? Catch them together. Shoot them both. And leave things so that it looked like they shot each other. Come on. Let's go. Right. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Meanwhile, Dr. Hubbard, alias the Sarsaparilla Kid, accompanied by the Lone Ranger and Toto, drew rein and dismounted a short distance from the big revival tent on the outskirts of Trail City. The Lone Ranger glanced at the lighted tent, which glowed in the darkness, then drew from his belt the guns he'd taken from the doctor. He handed them to Toto, saying, Put these into one of the doctor's saddlebags. Ah, let me do it. Let me put them into my holsters. I'll not use them. Do so you think Brother John will be wearing a pair of guns? It's hardly likely. Then why should you? All right. Have it your way. We go to tent now? Yes, Tonto. The shadow girl on the wall at tent. Must be Jane. She's John Thorpe's daughter. Shall I go in first? Yes, go ahead, Doctor. I don't know. I'll be right behind you. We're not ready for... Where is Brother John? Oh, he's in our living quarters beyond the partition at the other end of the tent. You don't remember me, do you, Jane? Remember you? No, I... That man behind you. Please don't be alarmed because of my mask. Tonto and I are friends of Dr. Hubbard. Dr. Hubbard? Jim Hubbard? Yes, Jane. It's been ten years since we saw each other. Ten years since you swore to kill my father. And now you're here with a masked gunman and a savage Indian to carry out your vow. No, Miss Thorpe. Don't lie to me. Father and I know about you, Jim. We've heard about the way you practiced every day with your guns. And we knew why you did it. Jane, I admit I swore to avenge my dad and, and came from the East for that purpose. But when I got here, I, I learned that your father had become a preacher. So you brought a masked gunman to do your killing for you. That's not true. I'll tell you why my father became a preacher. It was because he so bitterly repented the mistake he made. The mistake that that made you an orphan. He sold his ranch, his cattle, everything he owned. And he gave part of the money to charity. The rest he turned over to a lawyer in the East. A lawyer named Hawks. Hawks? The man who adopted me. Yes. Did you really believe he was a friend of your father? Well, that's what you were supposed to think. But actually, he was my dad's agent to raise you, to give you an education. I didn't know that. He kept Dad advised. We knew how well you did in school and how you were constantly practicing with guns. Jane, please believe me. I, I, I'm Jane. sorry. Oh, Dad. Who are these men? This is James Hubbard. Dr. Hubbard. Well, Jim, I'm glad to see you. I, uh, Mr. Thorpe, Brother John, I'm glad to see you. I, I've so much to say to you. Are uh, these men your friends? Yes, this is Tonto and... I don't know the masked man's name. I... I'm glad to meet you, Brother John. He and Toto saved my life. Then I'm glad to know you. You've done good work. Well, so have you. Jane told me what you've done for me. I didn't even suspect that you'd spent all your money. I, I didn't do it for you, Jim. I did it for myself. Ten years ago, I made a hideous mistake. I hope that by doing my best to make retribution... I might earn forgiveness. Ice your hand, Dolly. Uh, Watch you keep him high. Do as they say, Tonto. Brazos, lightning Joe. If anyone makes a move, I'll shoot the girl. This is luck, Joe. We'll get square with the masked man and the engine as well as the others. It's our night for revenge. Put down those guns. I threw you out of this tent a year ago. Yeah, and I'm here to get square. Shoot any one of us and you're both hanged. Not a chance. Everyone in town will think the South Florida kid did the shooting with the help of his pal. Who? You! I haven't a gun. You will have when they find your body. It'll be the gun that shot that preacher and his daughter. You two think you'll get away with the murder of all five of us? Yeah. And we'll start with the men who wear guns. You and your engine, pal. Brazos, you drill the engine, I'll take the mask, man. Right. You scoops! There was an explosion of action when Joe and Brazos tightened their trigger fingers. In that instant, the Lone Ranger and Toto, gambling with their lives, ducked low and charged. And in the same instant, Brother John rushed forward. The first shots went wild, but Joe and Brazo still held their guns and struggled for the chance to use them. The young doctor joined the fight. Hand on to his gun hand. I'll do the rest. I'll kill you. You will not get chance on my wrist. Drop the gun or I'll break it. Brazo dropped his gun, but Lightning Joe fired once more. Oh, the creature staggered back and fell as Toto finished the fight with a hard blow to Joe's jaw. Oh. Good work, Toto. He knocked one out. I've dropped my gun. Don't shoot. On your feet, Brazos. You're through. My father's been shot. He's unconscious. Give me a gun. I'll kill those crooks. You're no gunman, Hubbard. Do your work as a doctor while Todd and I tie these would-be murderers. My surgical kit is in one of my saddlebags. I'll get it. It was about half an hour later when the doctor finished work on the wounded preacher and looked up. 
He saw Brazos and Lightning Joe seated on the ground, tightly bound, and guarded by the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Jane, who had been kneeling in prayer, lifted her head when she heard... How about it, Doctor? Brother John will live. Thank heaven. And thank you, Jim. Dr. Hubbard. It was a difficult operation, well performed. You're the kind of doctor who's needed in the West. This is my country. I belong here. Here are your guns. I'll not need them anymore. Only to help Tonto guard these prisoners until the sheriff takes over. That's right. Are you sure my father will be all right? Yes, Jane. He should regain consciousness very soon. The sheriff will be here soon. Good. Uh, me, wait. Not you. Goodbye. Tonto, we're all mighty indebted to you and to your mask oh, friend. We're glad to help. Jim, who is the mask man? Jane, in his way, he's a combination of doctor, preacher, and lawman. He fights to save men's lives, their souls, and their human rights. He's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.